the world's richest man has been showing us how he'll run one of the world's biggest social media platforms. Elon Musk put a car in space. He brought rockets back down to Earth. He gets remarkable things done. And when, in 2017, Elon Musk tweeted, I love Twitter, someone replied, you should buy it then. Two weeks ago, he did. And, well... Elon Musk's second week of Twitter ownership is proving to be just as helter-skelter as the first. Two weeks back, Elon Musk posted this video of him arriving at Twitter's HQ. Let that sink in, he told us. Two days later, he announced, comedy is now legal on Twitter, which may be some people's way of describing what's happened since. Mr. Musk's first move was on Twitter's blue ticks. These verify who someone is and denote some level of importance. Elon Musk didn't like it, calling it a lords and peasants system. Instead, he said, anyone will be able to buy a tick. Power to the people, he tweeted. Blue for $8 a month. And this people power is, of course, also a new revenue stream. Musk added, to all complainers, please continue complaining, but it will cost $8. And he added that the idea for charging for insults and arguments came from Monty Python. I just paid. No, you didn't. I did. I did. <laughs> Listening to the demands for $8, David Frum of The Atlantic urged Mr. Musk to stop because it makes you sound like an angry, squeegee man. The advice, though, has gone unheeded. And in the middle of last week, things moved up a gear. Musk posted about an unsubstantiated conspiracy theory about the hammer attack that hospitalized Paul Pelosi, husband of senior US Democrat Nancy Pelosi. There's a tiny possibility there might be more to this story than meets the eye, he said. There was also more than a tiny possibility that this would amplify the misinformation. And though the tweet was deleted, that's exactly what happened. Trending on Twitter mm -hmm. is the lie about this guy because Elon Musk pushed it. By this point, the Musk Twitter experience was not to everyone's taste. For advertisers, this is all about risk. They're working with someone who is inherently unpredictable in a high stakes, high profile situation. So they're pulling out. Elon Musk blamed activist groups for the fall in ad revenue, insisting nothing has changed with content moderation. Something had changed though. Musk was in charge and he was tweeting and acting at speed. Thousands of jobs were cut to save money. And then across the weekend, people started changing their profiles to Elon Musk to highlight the risk of impersonation if anyone can get a blue tick. US comedian Kathy Griffin did this. On Monday, her account was suspended. And for a moment, talk of comedy being legal was paused as Elon Musk explained, going forward, any Twitter handles engaging in impersonation without clearly specifying parody will be permanently suspended. And while the self-proclaimed free speech absolutist was fleshing out the details of his content moderation rules, Kathy Griffin then appeared again via her late mother's account, tweeting, I'm back from the grave. And Monday wasn't done there. Elon Musk wanted to talk politics too. On the eve of the midterms, he posted, shared power curbs the worst excesses of both parties. Therefore, I recommend voting for a Republican Congress. And while Elon Musk was worrying about curbing the worst excesses in Washington, nothing was curbing his Twitter account with rival social network Mastodon labeled Masturbatodon. Watching all of this was Dan Primack of Axios. It's not so much the concern of, you know, the hellscape right now, it's the chaos. He seems to be largely making this up as it goes along. Elon Musk has emphasized the work he's doing on bots and spam. And on Wednesday, he also informed us Twitter will do lots of dumb things in the coming months. That process may already be up and running. But this is Elon Musk. He uses disruption to great effect. And so while he may do some dumb things in the coming months, that doesn't mean in the long run he can't make it work.